You're not going to believe what I've just found as I've been digging in this bed. <laughs> I haven't got as many as <laughs> really as I thought. That is an absolute mystery to me. A good way of using up any seeds. The sun is out. Hello, and for the first time this year, I am saying welcome to a sunny allotment. The sun is out. So I'm making the most out of the nice weather today because I don't know how long it's going to last and I'm going to get a few jobs done on the plot. So I've got some Jerusalem artichoke which I want to get planted and I've got this large container from my garden and I'm going to put it in there on this corner next to where I planted my horseradish and next to these two beds outside of my fruit cage. I've also got a box of asparagus crowns, so they're one year crowns and I'm going to start a brand new asparagus bed. So I've already got one asparagus bed in one corner of the allotment, right at the front. I'm going to do one the opposite corner, so I'm going to have two corners of asparagus um, on the plot. So I've got six crowns and I'm going to plant them in this bed here. Before I do that, I want to show you something that keeps turning up mysteriously in my beds. These little beans have been cropping up in my beds. Where are they coming from? And they're just always lying on top. Look, there's another one here. That is an absolute mystery to me because they weren't there when I weeded the beds in the plot a couple of weeks ago and they weren't there when I came down last week and I planted my horseradish so where are they coming from so that is my question of the day where are these beans coming from has anyone got any ideas I'm just going to show you in my polytunnel as well before I plant my asparagus so I'll just show you how everything's getting on. So my Savoy cabbages looking absolutely fantastic. All my garlic's looking great as well. My lettuces are looking really good, really pleased with them. They look fantastic. My broccoli is flowering. So I'm gonna leave that one on. I'll harvest like these pieces because I think they're gonna flower soon anyway. So I'm gonna harvest these pieces and I'll harvest all the shoots from the purple sprouting broccoli. Anything that is starting to flower like this, I will just let flower and then I'll take it up. But it's been nice harvesting from this area during these months when nothing else is really growing. I've really enjoyed having something growing and you know, being able to harvest in the cold months. It is actually quite warm today. So I'm saying the cold months, but it's actually warm today. So just as I'm speaking to you, on the floor is a huge slug which reminds me that this week i am going to be using nematodes on the allotment i was going to do it today but you're supposed to do it when it's overcast um like in the evening time and it's really sunny today so i thought it's not a great day to do it so i'm going to wait till either it's not a sunny day which we probably won't have to wait long for that or when it's overcast and come down to it. I am gonna get it done this week though because they've just been delivered. So hopefully that will help me with my slug problem because I don't know about anyone else, but my allotment and my garden is full of slugs everywhere. Slug, slug, slug. Okay, so bed behind me, I'm gonna dig a ridge, two ridges going along down the bed, two ridges, and then put my asparagus grounds on top and the roots going down so that they get really good drainage and then i haven't actually got any but i need to get some cocoa mulch because i use that on my other asparagus bed and i really rate it so it stops any weeds and it holds all the moisture in so i need to get some of that but i'll get them planted i've got some farmyard manure that i can add and then hopefully sometime this week i'll come back and i'll mulch the top of it you're not going to believe what i've just found as i've been digging in this bed so I've just gone down quite far and I've just found a sheet of plastic there. I don't know where it ends. Oh my goodness. It looks like it's right underneath all of the soil. That's going to need to come up. Right, I'm going to see how much of this it spreads. So I'm going to try and dig down around this and see if it's going to be something I can dig up myself. Okay, so it looks like this. As you can see, I've just dug that bit there 
and it it's goes right the way around so i'm gonna have to have a massive think about this area because i don't know how far that goes that could technically go right the way up i really don't know so so this is one of those situations where you've really got to think is the juice worth the squeeze so i could spend a couple of hours digging that up am i going to get all of it how far down does it go or could I just make that more of a raised bed there maybe and raise the bed up a bit more, fill the soil up a bit more so that the roots would never need to go down that far. It might be a better solution to do that. It is next to that apple tree. And I'm thinking that the plastic under here was probably put there because of the apple tree, because of the apple tree roots. I'm assuming, I don't know that, I'm just assuming. So what I'm gonna do I'm going to pick another bed for the asparagus and just get that planted and then I'm going to have to rethink that area because that might be an idea. I might be able to raise that up a bit and just use that for some shallow rooted things. That is probably a better idea than me breaking my back now for a couple of hours and not getting all of the plastic anyway. That's the issue that we're going to have. Okay, so I think I'm going to use this bed here for the asparagus. So I will have an asparagus bed here. That bed is a lot larger than this one but this bed can definitely fit six in it. That's absolutely no problem. It's still big enough to fit six crowns in. So I'm gonna do, this is the asparagus bed, and I'm gonna rethink the bed in the corner that's got all the plastic underneath, because I don't even know what's under that plastic, and I could just be opening a can of worms, and I don't wanna be doing that today. So what I've done, I've dug down and I've done in each hole, I've got two sides and then a small ridge for the asparagus crown to sit on. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six of them. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the crowns on top and then we're gonna cover the whole bed with some manure, some well-rotted manure. Around the asparagus crowns, I'm just going to put some cardboard on top of there because it is quite reedy. There's a lot of bindweed in that bed. I'm not too worried about it because we get rid of it in the end. So let's have a look at what varieties I've got. So I've got, so I've got Avalim. So I've got two crowns in there. Pacific Purple two crowns in there and gin limb probably not saying any of these right but anyway I've got three different varieties there's the, the same varieties as I've got in my other asparagus bed one of the crowns failed so I contacted the grower that I got them from and they sent me a whole new batch but obviously the year later so hence why I've now got two lots of asparagus but who can have too much asparagus that's what I want to know So these ones, as you can see, have already started growing. Okay, so that's my asparagus bed all planted. So it's got loads of manure by the crowns and then I put cardboard in between and just added that manure on top just to suppress any weeds that might be in there and then what I'll do I will get some cocoa mulch and I'll mulch that in the next couple of days because I really rate that stuff I've used it on my other asparagus bed and it's really worked well so the exciting thing is so my asparagus that I planted last year which were one year crown so now they'll be two years old so I've got another year and then they'll be ready to harvest and these ones will be the year after so I'll have a bit of a staggered asparagus harvest but not this year next year will be a good year for asparagus in fact what I'm going to do I am actually going to cover that bed because things around the allotment like digging in my soil so I've actually got the brassica net in. I'm just gonna shove that over it, put some bricks around it, and then hopefully that'll protect it.
now for the Jerusalem artichokes. Okay, so I have got my tub that was at home and I've got my Jerusalem artichokes. I'm just gonna fill this a bit with the soil from the bed, which I used before to do my Jerusalem artichoke, which is a bit full. Pop these in and then I'm gonna fill it up with compost. My Jerusalem artichoke is now planted so I'm really excited about that little corner of my allotment with my horseradish and my Jerusalem artichoke okay so before I go I'm just gonna double check what is going on in my fruit cage and just see if anything else needs any attention so my strawberries are all looking absolutely fine my gooseberries looking fine that's looking like it's leafing out really nicely there's no life on my current yet can't see anything come into life. Now this was the one that I got in the bargain corner for 2 dollars so we will see how that does. I don't think, it's not completely hard, so I think it is alive. We'll see what that comes to. At the moment, I've only planted a couple of raspberry canes. This one's come to life, this one hasn't. So that's the bits in the fruit cage that I just need to keep an eye on for the next couple of weeks, see what's starting to come to life. And I've still got blueberries to go in there and I've got plenty of time to fill that up. So I'm not too worried about that. I've got my oregano and my sage that needs to be moved. So I need to think about where I want those to go. I have actually got to take a few things from here to the dump, to the bin. Not a lot, but the paths getting out of here are really damp at the moment and they're quite slippy. So I'm not gonna attempt that today. I'm gonna leave them in the corner. And then when it's a little bit drier, I can remove them from the plot. Okay, so I've got a few bits to do at home now. I've got a few things to sew. I'm actually starting to sew stuff this week. So I've been holding off, starting to sew a few little bits and pieces and get a few jobs done at home. So I'm gonna leave the plot now and I'll see you at home. Okay, so I am back from the plot and I'm ready to get some little jobs done at home. So first thing I really wanna do is something I'm so pleased that I'm actually doing. So I've had a really big sort out of my seeds. Now you probably saw the state of them before and this was just overflowing. I've actually sectioned them all out now into different varieties and, and when I'm sowing them and things. So this is a, quite organized for me. <laughs> it might not look that organized, but for me, this is organized. So what I've decided to do this year is not so anything that I don't wanna eat or that my family doesn't like eating. Now, we pretty much eat everything, but there's certain things that it's just not worth taking up the space and the time to actually grow. So what I'm doing with all of those things, I've filled these two packets up with all of the seeds that we don't actually eat or ones that are quite old seeds that I haven't used for the last couple of years. So with all these seeds in here, I'm going to be sowing some microgreens. So in these two pots, I've just filled them with some compost. I'm going to have them on my kitchen windowsill and they'll just grow away into little shoots and then I can just use them as microgreens. So I've got quite a lot of seeds in here. So I've got some chard. I grew this rhubarb chard, I think, I think it was actually before I had an allotment and I grew it on my patio and I haven't used it since, so I'm gonna be doing them. I've got some lettuce that I haven't sown for a couple of years. I've got beetroot, I've got coriander, mustard greens. These are all seeds that came in with a big pack of seeds that I got. I think it might have even been from the pound shop. I don't know if anyone recognises these packets, but I'm pretty sure they're from the pound shop. And what I do is, which I'm gonna try and stop doing is, if I see something that I want to grow, and these are only a pound, so for example, this says cinnamon basil, and I thought, oh, that's really interesting, I'll get that, but then I'm left with all of these other seeds that I've already got seeds for, or I'm not particularly interested in growing. So anyway, I've used these packets, and a lot of the seeds were in those packets, so lesson for me, not to <laughs> be buying these seeds that I don't actually want to sow. Even though they're only a pound, it's, it just ends up being in my seed container, 
and I don't actually end up sewing them. So I've got another bag full here and it's all the same sort of thing. The ones that came with those seeds, I've got some more beetroot, I've got some more chard, I've got um, some radish and I've got a packet of rocket that's quite an old packet. So I've already got some other rocket. So I thought I'm gonna use these as my microgreens. So anyway, so I'm gonna get sewing these now. I'm just gonna mix them up as and when. So I've got two pots here that I'm gonna be starting today. And then I'll start another set maybe in like three or four days. So I've got an ongoing supply of microgreens. Okay, so I've got quite a lot of beetroot. So I'm gonna get all the beetroot together and sew them in one because it's they'll all be germinating at the same time. And I've got quite a small pot and I think the beetroot, it's dripping everywhere, all over the table. I think the beetroot um, will probably fill this area. So let's find all the beetroot. I, I'm gonna sew this beetroot all together in the top of this planter and hopefully get some nice microgreens from them. So I'm obviously sewing them really thickly a lot thicker than what we normally would to cover this entire surface of this pot. I just thought this was a really good way of using up any seeds. Can I just make sure I've got one thin layer there? So that is absolutely fine. And I've got one more beetroot. Let's get this full of beetroot. So I've got some nice microgreens. Ah, oh, there we go. Even that out a bit. So there's not too many clumps. So each seed needs to have contact with the soil to germinate. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna spray over the top of this to keep it really moist. And then I will just cover this with a plate. Once it's germinated, I will put it on my kitchen windowsill and wait for it to grow. So now I've got a slightly bigger pot, but I'm not sure what I'm gonna grow in it. What should I grow? Let's have a look what I've got that could germinate all at the same time. That's what I'm trying to do. I've got quite a lot of the chard. Maybe I should do the chard in this one. And I've got some silver chard here as well. Let's get that in. The seeds actually look very much like beetroot seeds. They're quite big and bulky. So I've definitely got enough to fill the top of this. Okay, so that is my chard. And that is my beetroot. So like I say, I'm gonna just mist over the top of that, spray that with some water, put a plate over the both of them, wait for them to germinate. Hopefully they germinate because these are some old seeds, but at least I'm using them up. And I feel sometimes I hoard the seeds because I think, oh, I might use them, but I, I don't. And then they just go to waste. So this is quite a good idea, I think, to make use of all those seeds that we're not actually using. At least we're gonna get some nutrition and get to eat something. So then I've still got some seeds left here, but what I'll do is I will wait. I've actually got some cress as well. So that's exciting, I haven't grown cress for a long time. But um, I'm going to keep all these to one side and then as these um, germinate, I'll probably start another pot, just maybe one, and then just keep it going over the next couple of weeks until I've used them all up. And I think that's a nice little addition, microgreens, because you can use them on everything. And actually, I might start doing that in general, start you know, growing microgreens, because they're so good for you. They literally, you just need a pot on the windowsill. You can grow them in anything. And they're quite cheap to do as well. You don't need a lot of compost. You don't need a lot of seeds. Um, well, you need more seeds than if you were growing the plant to full, but, you know, if you're using the cheaper seeds that you see in the sale sometimes, I know that in our garden centre they have seeds on sale quite a bit, so it might be worth even just picking up a couple of them and sowing some microgreens. So I've got a box full of seeds that I'm going to start sowing this week. I haven't got enough compost to start all of these so i've got to pot up my chilies as well which i started um a few weeks ago now i'll actually i'm gonna go and get them and show you what they look like so this is just one of the trays and i did three of these but as you can see 
one of them didn't come up. This one was Amy Pepper, but the rest of them did, and they're all looking really good, so these do need to be potted on now. But you can see there, the roots are looking really, really good. So I'm gonna get these potted up, and I do wanna start a few bits off this week, but I haven't got enough compost to do it. So tomorrow morning, I'm gonna head to the garden center, grab some potting on compost for my chilies, because I wanna really give them a good start. And then I also need, I've got some cocoa coir to start off some seeds, but I've got quite a lot to do. So I'll probably grab a bag of compost to keep here. I thought I had another bag, but it's rose compost. Um, so that's my fault, misread the bag. But I need to actually go through my greenhouse as well and see what's there because where everything's sort of like been over winter and stuffed in, I'm looking and thinking things are other things. <laughs> I'm like, I've got some of that and it's actually not. So I need to go through the greenhouse as well. So I've got quite a busy week this week but tomorrow morning garden centre and start some seeds put up my chilies it's going to be a really good week this week I feel like spring really is coming which is really really exciting so I think I'm going to take you to the garden centre so I will see you in the morning for our little trip out good morning I am at the garden centre bright and early this morning and I've come for some potting up soil so let's have a look and see what they've got here. They've actually got these smaller bags, which I might just grab because I only really need it for my chilies. Let's have a look. What have they got? Cotton on plants. John in this number two. Feeds for up to six weeks. I think I'm just going to grab one of these. Or should I just grab a big bag? So, John in this number two, six ninety nine. It's not bad, is it? I might just grab one of them. And then I've got some if I need it for anything else then. I've only got a limited amount of room in my greenhouse, so I don't like having loads and loads of bags of compost, but I could. I'm using some today for my chilies, and then I could just keep it in the garage until then. I'm always thinking about space and what I've got. At the allotment, I've got lots of space for as many bags of anything I want, but at home, I haven't got as much space, so I need to think about it, but I think I am gonna grab a bigger bag. They have got some gorgeous stuff here but I'm not even looking at it today because it is overcast so I'm going to grab this and I'm going to head straight down to the plot and do my nematodes because I've been waiting for a day that is overcast and not sunny because that's when you're supposed to do it so I'm going to grab my bag and I'm going to head down to the plot so here I am down at the plot everything's looking brilliant my little hole from yesterday where I found all that plastic everything's looking really good but I'm just excited to get these nematodes down because slugs are not my friend they hate me and my plot I think well they love my plot but they hate me okay so I've got my nematodes I got these from gardening naturally um, I bought them so it's not sponsored post or anything I bought these and they're in this packet so the instructions are make a stock solution by emptying the whole packet into four litres of water. So I've bought an old watering can that's a seven litre can. So I'll fill it just over halfway, add the packet in, and then I've got another watering can that I use up here that I can put a tiny bit of this in and then make that up to five litres and then use that to water the beds. So that is how I'm gonna do it. I'm so excited about this because I'm just constantly having slugs. Slug damage, slugs eating things, slugs, slugs, slugs. So I'm hoping that this is going to help me this year. And hopefully I'll be able to have a nice salad bed without having slugs eating it all. So very excited. So I'm going to go and get some water first of all. So I've got my water. I'm just going to let a little bit of that out because I want it just over half. I think that's about right. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna give that a little bit of a mix. Okay, so I've got my other watering can, which I'm gonna be using to actually water the allotment. This is, it says on the back this is 10 litres. So I'm just gonna fill this about half full and then I'm going to add a tiny bit of the nematode mix and then get water in. Okay, so I'm just going to pour a tiny bit 
into that other solution give it a mix and then I'm going to get water in Okay, so that is the whole plot covered with nematodes and I've just watered it all in as well. The reason I wasn't using a hose as well is because our water's actually turned off so our water doesn't get turned on until spring. So luckily, um, I'll show you actually, luckily one of the water tanks like two plots away from me is open and that actually collects rainwater so I use that. I'll just show you where it is. So it's just walking from where I come in and there's this tank here and that collects rainwater. So I've definitely got my steps up <laughs> this morning because I've been going backwards and forwards with watering cans but it's done and I'm really pleased about it. I thought the sun was going to come out a minute ago and I thought no it was meant to be overcast all day but it is going to rain as well. Um, I think about half past 12 so it's about half past 11 now so I'm gonna wait for it to rain. I have watered it all in anyway, but it'll be good because I need to keep the soil damp for the next couple of weeks, which shouldn't be a problem with the weather at the moment. But anyway, that's it. I'm gonna get home and put up my chilies now. Right, okay, I am now in my greenhouse and I'm ready to pot up my chilies. So I've got my three trays of chilies that I sowed a um, good few weeks ago now. They are so ready to be potted up, so I'm gonna get that done today. I went and got my compost, as you know, from the garden center. So I'm all ready. I don't even wanna show you the state of the greenhouse, but I'm gonna. It is dumping ground at the moment, absolute dumping ground. I've got my seeds here, cause I'm gonna try and sow another couple of things as well today. But look at this. I mean, this is absolutely full of gloves. I've got pots absolutely everywhere. This is everything I brought back from the plot. So it is all just like gloves, um, seed trays and whatever else. I've got loads of seed trays under here. I have got my overwinter chilies here, which actually look okay. And I've got the blueberries, which are coming up nicely. And I've got, and in the corner here, I've got some parsley, which is actually looking okay but it is a dumping ground. <laughs> so I need to go through all this, but it's not a job for today because today is potting up chilies. So I'm gonna get all of those potted on and sow in another couple of things. I'll probably do some peas and maybe, I don't know, I'm gonna have a look through it and see what I'm gonna do, but I'll see how the time goes. First things first, I'm gonna get all my compost ready. So I just put my compost into one of these blue buckets that I've got, and then it's just easier for me to pot them on using my little scoop. And I'm not sure what I'm actually gonna pot them into. How many have I got? So I've got 24 peppers and chilies. So I'm thinking, just for space wise, and the size they're in now, potting them up, I think I might use my polystyrene boxes. I've had these for absolute years. I think I bought some pansies in them. I don't know if it still says anything. No, I think one of them might still have the price on it. Let's have a look. Yeah, pansies. So years ago, I bought some pansies in these and I've been using them ever since. They're so good, I love them. Um, and it means that they're not being thrown away. So I love things like that when you can just carry on using something. So I think I'm gonna use them just space-wise at the moment. So I'm gonna get them potted up now. Okay, so I've just emptied some of that um, putting on compost into my bin and I'm just gonna grab some perlite and just mix a little bit of that in just to help with some drainage. Perfect. Okay, so what I think I'm gonna do is actually do it in rows. So I think I'm gonna do, because there's pretty much three of every single pepper or chili that I've sown. I think I'm gonna do, so like the three, so that I can just label the end and then that three is what variety it is and that might keep me organized 
I think that's what I'm going to do. So let's see what we've got. So these ones here, these red peppers, these were the ones that I didn't have a label for when I saved the seeds, so they've just got red pepper. So we'll do those ones first, and then the hot wax as well. So I've got red peppers and hot wax in one. I'm trying to stay organised here. So let me do my labels. Okay, red peppers, here we go. We'll have them at the end. Red pep. Okay, so I'll fill my tub up. Okay, let's see what the roots are like. Okay, so I'm just going to loosen the soil. Let's see if I can just... Yeah, that's come out quite easily. They look really good, really healthy. I'm pleased with that. So just make a really big hole in there and pop that in. So that's the first one done. And then I'm just going to carry on doing that with the rest of my chilies. I just remembered I've got these little tools that Vince got me. So I'm going to use these. It's so exciting. They're quite hard to get these seeds out of these trays, but I've just got it out like that. So cute. Okay, so that is all my chilies potted up. So I've actually got a lot of chilies and sweet peppers, <laughs> but they're gonna go in my mini poly tunnel and I'm hoping to fill the whole thing. It is quite big, so I'm hoping that they do really well there, but this is the next stage and I just want them to grow on really well. So what I think I'm gonna do, cause I'm running out of time a bit today, I might just sow some peas because I've actually got a lot of saved seed for peas and I don't know if they're gonna come to anything anyway. So. I'm going to sow this lot today. Um, I've got loads of these old planters that I'm going to use, as well as this big metal, don't know what it is, but I've been using it to sow peas the last couple of years. So I'm going to start them in here and then see how they get on. I haven't actually got as many as I thought. I've got two. Yeah, I haven't got, <laughs> I haven't got as, many, <laughs> as many as I thought. So let's just do these two smaller containers these two smaller envelopes in a big envelope and it made me think I had a lot more than what I did but that's still fine I don't think I we don't know we'll be positive something may happen with these but I'm just going to sprinkle them on top spaced out see how many I've got in, <laughs> in this packet about the same okay let's do this all done okay they're going to need some water because that soil is actually a mix that i made up last year but i'm just using it up so it's got really old compost and perlite in it but it's what i've got so i'm using it up before i start using anything else i have got some cocoa blocks that i need to use as well but i'm going through as i do and just using up what i've got first and i'm not sure about these seeds anyway so i think we'll see we'll see what happens but that's it for today. I'm going to water these now. And then that is it for today. I feel like I've had a really good day today. I feel like I've got a lot done actually. But I'm tomorrow I am going to be sowing a lot more. So the seeds behind me will be seeing their new home in some compost tomorrow. So it is now actually the end of the week. And I didn't end up sowing anything else. But we have come out for the day. And we have come to the lovely Kew Gardens. It's actually raining quite a bit at the moment. But we're exci really excited to spend the day. So I'm going to finish that video here um, and hopefully come with you in my next video about our trip to Kew Gardens so thank you so much for watching today and I will see you again soon